Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is something that I've been looking forward to filming for quite a while now. It's an update on how to edit in the style of Donald Boyd on Instagram. So if you don't know already, this is Donald Boyd. This is the photo we're going to be basing it off. These two nice zebras standing in this kind of grassland area. Um, this is his account. He posts some really stunning photos, lots of animal portrait kind of things. Um, definitely go ahead and check him out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be editing in the style of Donald Boyd. This is the photo that we'll be editing. So this is the final colour grade. This is before, and then obviously this will be after. So do stick around towards the end of the video. This is kind of a really good colour grade that kind of really encompasses all of Donald Boyd's style that we can put into one photo. So do stick around to the end to kind of watch everything to make sure you learn as much as you can. But before we jump straight into the video, there's one thing I want to talk about before we go any further. So I'm sure lots of you people really want to know how to use Lightroom properly, understand exactly how to use this hugely powerful piece of software to create edits such like this without having to watch hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of YouTube videos that teach you kind of a little bit about what you need to know. So I'm sure lots of you really want to know how to do this, edit properly, understand the platform, know how to create some really stunning edits that you could edit off the bat really quickly yourself without having to watch loads and loads of tutorials each time you want to edit a photo. So if that sounds exactly like you, and if you want to edit photos in the style of your favourite Instagram influencers, to the point you can even become one of your favourite Instagram influencers, you can become one of those people who post really good photos with a really nice colour grade and you blow up and your Instagram account does really, really well. So I'm sure most of you guys want to be at that point and you really want to learn how to use Lightroom properly. So if this sounds like you and if you do want to learn how to use it properly, I have put together my four years worth of experience editing in this platform into one nice course that you guys can go ahead and check out. It's hugely accessible, anyone can get it, anyone can take the course depending on how far through in your understanding of using Lightroom, you can take the course. So if you're a bare bones beginner and you've never opened Lightroom before, that's fine, grab the course and it will teach you exactly what to do, even from opening up the platform and having a look around and kind of getting used to the piece of software, all the way up to a kind of professional colour grader where you can colour grade some really nice photos to post your Instagram theme. So that's what I've done, as I've put together a course that kind of encompasses everything that I know, my brother knows, all into one course, huge amounts of experience going through this course, so many hours of work, so if you do want to check out this course, there will be the first link down below in the description. So honestly, if you really want to know how to use this platform, stop spending hours and hours and hours searching on the YouTube trying to teach you everything you need to know, because you're going to be there for months and months. In my case, it took me three years to actually learn exactly how to do things, because back then there wasn't really many videos teaching me how to edit in certain styles, like my channel is at the moment, which is why I created this channel. But um, if there is something you want to learn, then of course, join the group get on the course, you'll have access to a Facebook group which you'll have complete access to me and my brother will go live every single week answering any of your questions, we can give you feedback on your photos, you can post your photos in there, there'll be other people in there, you can bounce ideas off each other, give feedback, give advice, talk and kind of grow as a big community to kind of learn and teach everyone how to use this amazing piece of software. So if this sounds like you, of course, do go ahead and check out the first link down below in the description. It'll mean a lot to us if you can go ahead and check out the course. Okay, so without any further ado, let's just jump straight into the video. So as I said, this is Donald Boy's Instagram page here. Do go ahead and check him out. He will be down below in the description as well. So first thing to note um, is what kind of photos he posts. So obviously it's mainly animal nature kind of vibes, um, lots of lions and leopards. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of pick apart his photos and work out what he does and what is behind the kind of editing to get this look. So for a start, let's just quickly have a look at um, this one for example. So first thing to note is if we zoom in on this photo, you can see around here he's put in a lot of grain into the image. So there is grain in there, so we will be putting in a little bit of grain, obviously you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can adapt it and make your own style from it, but that's what he looks like he does in a lot of his photos. Um, another thing is this will be the photo we're basing off, as you can see, this is the final edit. So we've kind of gone for that kind of orangey grass, and we've got this nice white sky in the background. But we've also gone for this really nice moody sky that he's got here where they, he kind of gets these clouds and he makes them really dark, really moody, adds in a load of grain there and just crushes everything, makes it really dark, moody, contrasty, vibrant and it's just really, really textured shot. So we'll be putting in that as well into our image. Um, another thing to note is he puts in a lot of fade to his images, you can see here in the blacks. Uh, he kind of, you bring up the tone curve, it kind of gives you this nice soft faded look. So he does that in lots of his images. One thing to note as well is he adds in a shed ton of clarity into his images. This one is a really good example of this. You can see here in the elephants how bright and contrasty they are. So he's got loads of contrast, he's got loads of clarity, and it looks like he's added a load of sharpness in there as well, and of course he's got his grain. 
Everything else is pretty desaturated, so he's got these very soft greys, and then he's got this really vibrant popping orange in the grass. So we'll be kind of incorporating all these ideas. You can see here again, there's a lot of fade in this puffin here, and a lot of grain in the background as well. So we'll be doing this kind of thing when we go through and do our color grading, our edit. So without any further ado, let's just jump in and get editing. Okay, so this is the final color grade that we're going to be aiming towards. Now, what I've done is, first thing is I've gone ahead and I've put in a 4x5 ratio ready for social media, so ready to kind of upload onto Instagram. So you can just do that by selecting 4x5 aspect ratio here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to reset this back to what it was beforehand. So this is raw out the camera, really nice photo, nice pony with a really soft, foggy sky in the background. So first thing, as I said, let's stick on a 4x5 aspect ratio. Something like that will be quite nice. Just kind of keep the horse central, keeping the focal point of the image. Click done. Okay, and now we're ready to start really diving in and get the editing done. Okay, so as I said, we will be basing it off these two giraffes, not giraffes, these two zebras here. Um, so what we're gonna do is first of all, I think we need to brighten up the image a little bit, bring up those shadows. It's a little bit dark at the bottom down here. Um, maybe brighten up the highlights. Might crush them a little bit, I'm not really sure. We'll decide as we go through, add in some grain, bring up the fade and adjust the colors of the grass. So let's get into the basic panel. So first thing, I'm gonna leave the exposure just as standard um, and I'm just gonna leave the white balance pretty normal. I don't think there's much we can do on the white balance. It's pretty much perfect. So we're gonna just leave that as is out of the camera. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna come down to contrast. And first of all, we're gonna add in a bit of contrast. We're just gonna bung up to about five. Now, it doesn't really matter the order you go ahead and do this. Usually I try and brighten the image up first before I add in any contrast, but you know, do whatever makes you feel the best when you go through and do your editing, with the, however you edit the photos. Um, next up, we've got the highlights. So as I said, I am gonna bring down those highlights. I think you'll see why in a minute as I go ahead and do this. Just kind of soften out the image. We don't want really, really, really vibrantly bright whites. Even though these are quite bright in the background here, you can see he's kind of crushed the highlights here. He hasn't got any piercing whites. Uh, if you kind of compare this white in the background to this white here, you can see that it's kind of crushed out those whites. Whereas if, of course, you know, choosing a different one like this, you can see, again, the whites also crushed. So that's what we're kind of going for. That's why we're bringing down the highlights there. So bring down the highlights. Then, of course, we want to bring up those shadows. Just kind of bring in some detail into the shadows there. Because we can't really see much going on with the horse over here. So we're going to bring that up to about plus 40, I think. Maybe, yeah. 40, 41, 42, around there, looks nice. Okay, next up we're gonna leave the whites just as standard and we are also gonna bring up the blacks as well. So we're gonna bring the blacks up to about plus 30. Now what that has done already, as you can see if I did before and after, it's just kind of lightened up those shadows, brought in a little bit of detail on the bottom, we can see kind of more what's going on down here and we can see the detail in the horse. Okay, so the next thing that's really gonna make or break this image, that's really gonna push it towards Donald Boyd's style is adding in clarity. Now, I always advise my students not to put in too much clarity because if you put in too much clarity, sometimes you can ruin the image. But in this case, in Donald Boyd's case, he adds in a load of clarity. So we're gonna jump in and just add in about plus 70, plus 75, like we're really not holding back on the clarity here. So you can see already, immediately, we've got these really nice, bright highlights, these really crushed blacks that kind of really work well with Donald Boyd's style. Next up, we're gonna get the vibrancy and we're also gonna whack that up to about plus 50. Now what that does is, for this photo, maybe not for all photos, but for this photo, it's gonna bring out the color a little bit more in the grass and on the horse, because obviously we've got this really nice desaturated gray sky here, but of course, it's not perfect. Um, the image doesn't have too many colors in it, so whatever colors are there, we want to make sure they kind of show through. That's why we bring up the vibrancy there. Okay, next up, here we come down to the tone curve. The tone curve is something that Donald Boy really uses in a lot of his photos, so we're gonna go for the standard, getting our three-point curve here so we can get ready to start adjusting our shadows and adding in a fade. So the first thing I like to do is just kind of bring up the mid-tones here. That'll just add in a little bit of contrast to the image, which we really like. We get this immediately, this really nice contrasty look that he gets in lots of his photos. That, for example, you can see here, this kind of effect, that how the light and the darks and the midtones are behaving is achieved by bringing up the midtones here. So we're gonna bring up those midtones, um, just about there. I'm not even sure, I think I might just bring up those highlights a little bit as well there. Next up, we're gonna get the shadows and we're gonna just bring those down a touch and get our blacks and we're gonna fade them out as well like that. Now just kind of work around 
do some little adjustments until we get the look we are going for. So I think I might have brought those up a little bit too much, so let's just have a play around. Okay, there we go. Let's just go for that. That's really nice. We've got a nice bit of fade in there. I might add a tiny bit more. Nice bit of fade in the shadows. Added in those contrast from the um, mid-tones here. So if I turn off the tone curve and turn it back on again, you can see the difference it makes there. We've added in a nice bit of fade to the horse and we've added in a good bit of contrast. Next up, we come down to the HSL sliders. Hue, saturation, and luminance. So I always like to edit it in this layout. So we're gonna start with the hue. Um, first things first, we are going to only really adjust the orange, yellows, and greens because that is all we've really got in this photo. We're not really gonna go much adjusting the blues because I quite like the look of the sky here. It works really well with the image. Okay, so for the oranges, as you can see, if I bring those down, it's gonna change the color of the horse. Now the horse doesn't really wanna to change to a luminescent green, and we really don't wanna change it to a pink either. So the oranges are pretty much all right. If anything, I think there is a little bit too much green in the horse, so I am just gonna bring that down to probably about minus three. Um, yellows is what is really gonna control the color of the grass as well as the green. So for the yellows, we are gonna bring those down, and you can see that really kind of brings in that dark orangey vibe to the, to the grass there. We're also going to do the same with the greens, just bring those all the way down to minus 100. Now, for both of these colors, I've brought them all the way down to minus 100. That's because there isn't too much of that color in the image, so it's, it's okay, I can do that. But with lots of photos, if you bring it down to minus 100, you'll start getting some really crazy looks. So I wouldn't necessarily advise bringing it down to minus 100 for your photo, but I'm just telling you to bring them down to the left, you'll get this more orangey look to your grass. Okay, so we're going to leave, as I said, the others as normal. I'm not going to change the sky to a teal color and I'm definitely not gonna make it a purple color either. So we're gonna leave the sky as normal and come down to the saturation. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the saturation of the yellows and greens just to, as I said earlier, bring back the color in the grass here. So we can bring this both up to about plus 40, plus 45. There we go. Now what you can see there, that has immediately just added in a little bit of color, popped to the image. We've got a little bit more contrast there. We've got this nice gray of the sky and we've got the oranges of the grass and in the foreground. Again, that's it we're going to do on the saturation, we're going to come down to the luminance next. And what I like to do is just kind of darken down the yellows to minus 100 as well. That just darkens the orange and gives you this nice, dark, autumnal, burnt orange look. Now, what I will do is bring up the oranges, the luminance of the orange, just to kind of add in an extra bit of contrast to the horse. Come to the reds, have a play around with there, there aren't really many reds. Now, the sky, I can brighten it up if I want, or I can darken it down. But for this particular image, because we're going to put in that nice gradient at the top, we're going to leave that as standard. Okay, so that's the HSL sliders done, so just a quick before and after. So before, uh, after, you can see immediately we are really pushing towards John Boyd style. We're kind of really getting that nice contrast, We've got these nice oranges down here, nice bit of fade. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play around with the split zone and see what we can get. Now with the split toning, what I like to do usually is add in blues to the shadows and oranges to the highlights, but for this particular image we're going to do the opposite way around because for the shadows here, the shadows will be in the grassland and in the horse. You can just see by looking at the image, those are the darkest areas of the image, so we want to add in oranges because we're trying to make them more orange. If we put in blue, it will kind of counteract what we've done beforehand. So we're going to kind of add in some oranges to the shadows and some blues to the highlights. So the nice thing to do is hold down Alt and adjust, and you can see the, the color is going to be applying. So I think a nice burnt orange, about 20, would work really well for this image and just bring that saturation up to about five. Coming up to the highlights, what I like to do is kind of put in a cold blue, so again, hold down Alt, bring it over, I think about 225 is usually a nice color, add in that really cold blue, and again, we're gonna put in the saturation here, a little bit brighter, a little bit more saturation rather, to about plus 15, plus 14. Okay, so now we turn it off, and on, very subtle, but what that kind of does is it makes the sky more blue and it makes the grassland more orange and just kind of evens out the whole image and gives you this nice smooth colour grade. Next up, we have the sharpening and noise reduction. Now this is something that you can really push uh, really well in these photos to kind of push towards Donald Boyd's style. So we want to add in a load of sharpening. Uh, we can leave the noise reduction as it is, so we can add in a load of noise reduction. So we can add in a load of sharpening. So what I like to do is put that right up to about plus 65. Now, in any other photo, I would not advise doing that. That is a huge amount of sharpening to add into the photo, but for Donald Boyd, he has this kind of really nitty gritty textured photo that can really be achieved as well as adding in grain. You can achieve that by adding in some sharpening as well. So that's why we've done that. And we're just gonna whack the radius up to three. That just kind of means that you can see here, if we bring it down to one, it's less sharpening of the horse and more the foreground, but we want to sharpen the, the main focal point of the image, which is, of course, the horse. So there we go. You can immediately see that adds in a really nice bit of texture and contrast to the image. If I turn it off and turn it on, it just brightens it up, makes it sharper, makes it really nice and clear. 
So we can leave lens corrections and transform as standard, and then we're going to come down to grain. So we are going to add in some grain. Um, this is just kind of personal preference, how much you want to add in. Um, we're going to have a go at putting in about plus 30, and bringing up the grain size, maybe to about 40, 30, something like that. There we go, nice amount of grain there. Nothing too much, but you can see we put in the grain in the sky just to kind of make it more textured. Finally, we're going to come down to camera calibration. Um, now, lots of people say you shouldn't do this. People say you should. I'm saying you've got the tools here. You might as well use it. So we're going to add in some red primary. Again, you just really want to have a go just sliding it around and seeing what works well for the image because there's no real way of telling you what to do for your image because it will depend on your camera profiles um, and it will also depend on the colors in the photo. So for this one, we're just going to put that up to about one. Not too much. Green primary, just leave as normal. Usually that makes the image go a bit funky. Yeah, brings out... That's actually quite nice to bring down to the left, actually, we get these nice burnt oranges. Um, that's how I get my look on my Instagram. Go and check me out. So maybe that's about minus five. In the blue primary, I am going to bring that down a little bit. That just kind of adds in that really nice contrast again to the, to the grassland down here. So I might bring that down to about minus 30, really. Don't want to push it too much. Okay, so about minus 29. Okay, so there is the basis of the color grade done. So if I do before and after, you can see immediately we've got a really nice contrasty, vibrant, well not vibrant, but textured, it's just really nice, that's basically in the style of Donald Boyd at the moment. But we aren't finished, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to add in that nice dehaze to the top of the image. We're going to do that by getting the graduated filter and just dragging that down over the top of the image like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my dehaze down to the left. Now that just kind of really nicely dehazes the whole image and then bring the exposure rather all the way down to the left. Now what that does is just applies this really nice blue kind of gray foggy clouded look to the image. So you can also spread it out larger if you want but um, I don't want it to kind of take over the whole image just as a nice boundary, a nice little touch to the image. I don't think I'm going to add in clarity to that, just bring that back down to zero. So there we go guys, that is the end of the color grade. Let's put that in full screen so you guys can see it. I really enjoyed editing this photo. I really think this is perfect for Donald Boyd style. Let's just compare it again. I think we can all agree that that would fit really quite nicely with his photos. If anything, why not let's just come down to the green primary. So what that does is really add in a nice bit of saturation to the oranges down here. So there we go, guys, the photo is finally finished. I really enjoyed doing this. I think that works really well. I'm really pleased with how that came out. I hope you guys really enjoyed it as well. Do go ahead and check out our Faded Nature preset pack. It's our interpretation in the style of Donald Boyd, of course. If he does sell his own presets, go ahead and check him out as well. But these are our presets. You guys can get something like this. Just one click, apply to your photo, and get the look like this. So that will also be down below in the description as well. Do go ahead and check it out. It's called Faded Nature. It's about six to eight presets, I think, in Donald Boyd's style. Um, based on like our interpretation of his style. So do go ahead and check that out. Um, of course, if you really want to know how to edit properly in Lightroom and really learn that kind of stuff, do go ahead and check out the course as well. You will not regret it. That course, honestly, it's amazing. I spent hours and hours working on it, so do go ahead and check it out. Thank you so much for watching the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you guys in the next video.